everyone. Thank you so much for joining us on our Women in Gaming show. We used to do this show monthly, but we now uh, doing it bi-weekly, so we've been he we were here two weeks ago, and now we're here again, which is awesome. So we're super excited to hang out with you again. Thank you so much for joining us, and thank you for the amazing reception that we've had with this show. It's been really, really good to see your support uh, and everyone following us. So today, uh, well, I'll introduce myself first. <laughs> I'm Katarina. I'm a program manager on Xbox Live and part of the Women in Gaming community. And today I'm joined by Tara. Tara, yeah, introduce hello. yourself. So I'm Tara Theo Harris. <laughs> Woo. Woo -hoo. Woo, we get slapped. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> um, so I'm Tara Theo Harris. I manage um, a lot of the U.S. consumer events. So I do a lot of the content strategy for places like PAX, Comic-Con, all that Exciting. fun stuff. Um, and I get to work with uh, Chris Munson Money Rumble, mm -hmm. which a lot of you may know. Oh, um, yeah, they do. Online. All the fun fests. Yep, with all the fan <laughs> fests, which is so much fun. And then lately, I um, have kind of joined on with the Gears of War team, <gasps> or the Gears team, and have been doing some project management for them. Which so is I'm fangirling now. Yeah. Because Gears is one of my favorite fan franchises. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. And so we're, we'll be playing a little bit of that later. Yep. Um, I recently have been introducing myself to it um, because it's not normally the type of game that I go for, but I have been loving yes, it. Yes. I love oh my to gosh, do that. I That's didn't amazing. think that like, yep. I would get so excited about all the different weapons, yep. but... I am. <laughs> no, it's it's super fun to play. Yeah. Um, and I'm excited that you picked Gears of War to play <laughs> on the stream because I've been waiting for that one. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so today is our sixth show, as I was saying. And um, the, I don't know. Should we go? Yeah, we'll go through what uh, the show will be like today, which the format is very much like what we've been doing. Um, so basically, we'll talk a little bit about the games that we are currently playing. Well, you kind of spoiled that one <laughs> for you. Uh, <laughs> and so um, the games that we're currently playing, then we'll, we have our uh, few segments that we talk about things that are happening in the gaming industry. Mm -hmm. The first one is the snaps. So we do give shout outs to people that are doing great things across our industry. We have a lot of those. Uh, then we have the game overs, which uh, we usually cover uh, themes or things that come up over the last two weeks that were not so good and we just want to talk about it, make sure we uh, we have a conversation with the chat. By the way, if at any time during the show you have any questions, please feel free to post it in the chat. I'm, I will try to go over them here on my laptop while talking to you and we can address some of those questions. You're and multitasker, then <laughs> it's wonderful. Yep, well, <laughs> well we'll try. <laughs> and then the one-ups uh, is we're going to talk about an awesome thing that happened in the industry in the past two weeks. Um, so, uh, obviously, as I was saying, you can participate and ask any questions in chat. We'll pick the best ones. And as a bonus thing, and as of the last episode, we actually have emotes. Oh my gosh. I know. That's awesome. So, if you follow the channel, you can use all of our special women in gaming emotes in the chat. Uh, we'd love to see you spamming those. Yeah. It's a good kind of spam. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, going to our currently playing uh, section, you mentioned that you were playing Gears of War 4. Yeah. How are you enjoying it? Where Are you playing the first one for... What are um, you? I started with Gears of War 4, okay. so I've, I've gotten a lot of spoilers for the first two. <laughs> yep. Um, but I'm absolutely loving it. It's been so much fun. Um, as I mentioned before, just getting to play with all the different weapons. The Lancer is my favorite, yeah. as I'm sure it is for most people. <laughs> do you chainsaw a lot? Oh, I do. I do. <laughs> yep. I love just like chainsawing people in half. <laughs> it's fantastic. Um, so that's been a lot of fun. I've been playing on casual because I'm, I'm letting myself kind of ease totally. into it yep. a little bit. But I'm already excited to go back and try it on a, a awesome. harder setting. Getting those achievements. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, I get all those chivas. So um, I'm, I want to say two-thirds or three-fourths of the way through the campaign. Mm -hmm. I'm really close to the end. Ooh, so I'm excited to, to play more of that. I um, want to see what you think about the ending once you're done. Yeah. <laughs> I know. I'm, I'm excited and scared yeah. <laughs> with everything that's going to see yep. how it goes. Um, but yeah, so I've been doing that. And then um, I play and I actually stream for Xbox, mm -hmm. Life is Strange. Um, so it's the, coming out. It's yeah, so the, the second episode, episode yeah. of Life is Strange 2 comes out tomorrow. Tomorrow. So I'm really excited and nervous about that because I <laughs> cried a lot in the first one. <laughs> yeah, I think we all did. Like, I cried harsh. probably all the episodes, but I love Life is Strange too. Like, I was actually scared going into, like, I was a huge fan of the first, but the characters changed and the, the story yeah. changed. And I was kind of like, will they be able to like do a great story again exactly. but it hit me so hard oh my gosh yeah, it is for those really who good. have played it there's yep. the moment where you have to throw a cell phone 
I couldn't yes. do it. I sat on that screen for like a half an hour yeah. and I just cried. Yeah. It, oh, I love it. So we'll be, we'll be streaming yeah. that. I will be. Week? So I'm going to play it in advance. Hopefully get those emotions yes. out in advance. Um, when <laughs> or it comes not. Out tomorrow, you shouldn't. Maybe. We'll see. <laughs> I, I cry easily. Maybe I'll cry all the time. Both times. Well, yeah. Um, but yeah, I'll be streaming on um, Mixer.com slash Xbox oh. next Wednesday. So there you go. You can see more of Terra next Wednesday. There you go. Um, so I'm currently, so I just finished Detroit Become Human on the PS4 Ooh. like two days ago. Okay. How and was I it? was, it was so good. I was it was mind blowing the amount of choices that you have and the amount of uh, paths and ramifications that every single decision that you do in that game has. Awesome. It was honestly, I, I just like, I actually felt for the developers in the end. I was like, how hard it must have been to come up with that game. Uh, so I was, I, I love Quantic Dream though, the developer of that. I played all of their games and so I love that one too. Um, but so now I've started playing Kingdom Hearts <gasps> 1 again. <gasps> Because Getting Kingdom Hearts 3 is coming in one week. Yep. Uh, there, we've been waiting for 15 years for that game. So I've already pre-ordered that on the Xbox, but I wanted to refresh, like get a little refresh. And so I started playing the first one. Awesome. Um, I, I would love to have time to play through all of them in one week. Definitely won't be able <laughs> to do that. Uh, but yeah, that's what I've been playing. Yeah, I'm excited to see that the difference between the first and the oh, third and kind of yeah. your reactions on that. Yeah, I don't know how that's going to be. I'm, I just know that I'm super excited because that's like, it's, it's been one of my favorite games for forever. Yeah. So, yep. So exciting. Um, so I think we now go to, we start playing Gears of War awesome. and then I have a bunch of questions to ask you because you've been like doing so many amazing things. Yeah, I didn't even mention yeah, this. Yeah, exactly. I myself. I'm so bad at we'll, that. We'll have time to play okay. that, <laughs> to to talk about it. Good. Uh, because we do have, so should we, should we go for the campaign? Let's sure. do some co-op. Okay, let's do co-op. And do I still remember all of this? Should we play the first one? Yeah. Okay, we'll play the first act. There you go. Sure. <laughs> cool. Um, so yeah, uh, tell us a little bit about this book. Totally. Yeah. <laughs> so in addition to doing all of the amazing things that I get yeah. to do for Xbox and getting to go to all those awesome conventions and um, talk to fans, I also, in my free time, have a blog called The Geeky Hostess, where I do uh, geeky, kind of fan-inspired recipes and parties. Mm. Um, so I've done... I did some Fallout Nuka Cola cupcakes recently. Wow. Um, what are some other gaming things I've done? I'm blanking on them all right now. Um, <laughs> but I've got fine. yeah, I've got a couple Minecraft. fun things about. I'm actually making the Life is Strange um, pasta today. I'm hoping to post that tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So if you play through the first episode, um, you'll you'll know that um, you'll you'll recognize the pasta. But through the blog, I was reached out to by a publisher to yeah. create the Minecrafters cookbook. Um, and they wanted to make a cookbook specifically targeted towards kids and their families, oh. um, which is really exciting. So the, some of the recipes in here are a little bit basic, yep. um, but they're teaching kids how to make recipes or make, you know, That's things incredible. in the kitchen. Time. So it's teaching kids how to make baked potatoes and steak, pork chops. Um, and I anything. see some really cute yeah. illustrations. Yes. I so love that those. was Grace Sandber Sanford is her last yeah. name. Um, she did the cutest illustration wow. for this. Um, but yeah, so basically I, I received an email being like, hey, yeah. are you interested in doing this? And I was like, heck yes. <laughs> so um, last year I spent a lot of time playing Minecraft, playing through the okay. Telltale game, doing a tons of research, um, finding every single mention mm -hmm. of food that was available in the base That's Minecraft. So cool. And um, then from there, adding that all in here and then also creating some kind of funsy ones. This is... It's all dirty because this is yep. my puppy, <laughs> and I've cooked a lot of my own things from oh, here. Oh, there's a lot of gaming tips and cooking yeah, tips. Yeah, so and it includes gaming tips as well. Um, is it find... related to Minecraft? or? Yes, so the, all the gaming tips are yep. Minecraft related. So it's telling you, you know, how much, um, you know, hunger is that going to be um, fulfilled with the different food items from the game, sure. yep. as well as, um, you know, just other funsy things. I'm trying to find some... <laughs> We have some, there we go. We have like oh. some more funsy things like we've got Creeper Krispies. Yum. We teach you how to make the cake. Um, we have something called a gingerbread chest. So it's like huh. gingerbread cookies, but you can hide stuff inside of it. So you can put like That's sprinkles so cool. or candies. Yeah. I put like mini M&Ms in them. <laughs> we have this beautiful redstone dust shake. Um, wow. Yeah. So just, it's been so that. much fun. It came out in November. Mm -hmm. um, you can find it at Barnes & Noble, Amazon, Powell's. Um, 
Target had it on their like best like gift guide for gamers over the holiday. Really? Which that's amazing. Was amazing for yeah. me. Yeah. And now I'm to the point where I'm seeing pictures and hearing stories about kids who are huge Minecraft fans that get this and just read through the whole thing. That's so really good. Excited. Yeah. And they're starting uh, cooking as a hobby and everything. Exactly. Those those must be cool stories. I'm yeah. like I picked, my heart. <laughs> yeah, I picked up that hobby of cooking this year. We should be playing. Should we be oh, playing? Gosh. Um, <laughs> I'm like, I'm just no, it's totally right fine. <laughs> um, and so um, I've actually picked up cooking as a hobby this uh, um, this year, uh -huh. and it's been so fun. So I'm definitely getting the book. Awesome. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's available on Amazon. I think it's. I mean, it's lower than the MSRP there. I think it's like twelve dollars on Amazon. Okay. Um, so people are looking for it. God, there's like for it. Um. So I actually would love to know how you got to where you are today. Of, um, I don't think we'll be able to like both of us be playing <laughs> yeah. and talking. This we'll is really each other hard. Play. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Maybe okay. Let's go back. Let's do. I'll play and I'll ask you questions and you awesome. can talk <laughs> about all of your awesome story. Let's, guys. This doesn't work. We've tried. We won't be able to concentrate. Listen, we're and really good on our own. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> we've got to entertain as well. Um, but yeah, well, I'd love to hear like how you actually got to the role that you're doing yeah. here at Xbox and how you got to write a book and everything. Yeah. Like, we'd love to totally. hear your story. So um, I've been doing marketing and events for about a decade now, mm -hmm. um, starting all the way back in you know high school and college. I was someone who would always find my way into helping out with events, whether that was through student council opportunities or creating my own events. Um, I created a really cool event at the University of Washington that still continues called the Everybody Everybody Fashion Show. And it was um, a fashion show specifically um, during Eating Disorder Awareness Week. Um, and it was all about, you know, healthy body image and anyone who wanted to be a part of it could could join in. We worked with a lot of local designers as well. Um, so I'm so excited that that has still continued on. And, um, yeah, from there, just found amazing event opportunities and um, always offered a volunteer. Yeah. Um, some of the, the best events I've worked on, I've gotten to do work with Cards Against Humanity and with Penny Arcade oh, wow. and with, um, like, Wootstock and people in that, that geek world. And a lot yep. of that came from me answering a tweet from someone I followed who said, I need last wow. minute help today who can help me. And I showed up and I did mm -hmm. my best and it was good enough for her to have me take over for her for some of the events. That's amazing. That's a really good, like if you, if you had to give any tips of people who are actually trying to get into, mm -hmm. um, into this industry and just doing what they love, like what are some of those tips that you would give? Definitely follow the people online that you look up to that have the positions that you want and um, just kind of see how they act online, see what their persona is like, mm -hmm. see what opportunities they have um, coming up. If they make sure that they're always at a specific convention, yep. go to that convention. Just become a part of that mm -hmm. world. Um, don't harass them in person and yeah. ask for jobs or things <laughs> like that. But just let them know, hey, you know, I want to do what you're doing. Yep. Um, you know, did you do any special schooling? Did you... Mm -hmm. Um, you know, what events should I be going to? Who should I talk to to volunteer? Yep. And just offer up your services and show off what you've got. Um, so there's a lot of those, like you actually touched a really great point. What are some ways of when you are going to talk to a new person, either in these conventions or online, you're trying to reach out to people and you have the best intentions. Mm -hmm. What are some good ways to strike that first conversation? Because I feel like people right. do struggle a lot with that first like Reaching yeah. out. Yeah. It's very tough. And I can yeah, get super introverted and shy, especially when I'm talking to like respected people in the industry that I yep. look up to. Um, I'd say, especially at conventions, yep. everybody is running around like crazy. If they look busy, leave them alone. <laughs> Let them do their thing. <laughs> if they're really short with you, don't take it personally. Just know that yep. they probably have a meeting that they have to run to or a panel. Um, but when you do have the opportunity to reach out, I would say if you do know them, if you've been following their work, say something like, hey, I mm -hmm. really like this specific thing that you've done yep. um, to show that, you know, they, yeah. you know who they are um, and you respect what they're, what they're doing and um, say, you know, I'm interested in doing something similar. Um, and then if you can give us more a specific question, I've gotten a lot of people saying, how do I get to where, yep. where you exactly. are? And that's, I mean, it's different for everybody. Yep. Um, but if you say, you know, what two events should I go to or yep. um, who, you know, what companies are your favorite that you think might be hiring something mm -hmm. I should be keeping an eye out for, or what are some amazing volunteer opportunities that you might know of? Right. Um, 
something specific that they can answer quickly yeah. is really helpful. That's a really good tip. Yeah. People, did you hear? <laughs> we have a lot to learn here. Um, so, I mean, I, I'm sure that working in events, you like meet a lot of amazing people. Uh, what are some of your favorites and inspiring women uh, in gaming that you look up to, Ooh. that inspire you? Yeah. Um, gosh, I mean, all of the women that I've worked with yeah. at Microsoft, I have just loved working with they're all extremely hardworking, really good team players yep. very creative um i feel like i'm gonna be sucking up to say all their <laughs> names but i will um so i work really closely with brina hatcher who's on mm -hmm. the event team um and has been doing that job for like 10 years here wow. and is just amazing if you yep. want to make something happen like she can make <laughs> it happen um and she'll do it with a smile on her face yep. um even when <laughs> you're really annoying and really last yep. minute which most <laughs> event stuff is um so she's been fantastic to work with um my um boss on my team cindy walker mm -hmm. who puts together all of the huge events she's in right of e3 and all the really big ones um has been so inspiring mm -hmm. just to like if you ask, you know, what about this? She's like, we did this three years ago, and this is what <laughs> happened then. And everything. Right. Like she she knows her stuff, um, and it's so organized, having to deal with so many different teams and people. She's fantastic. Um, and then lately, I've been working a lot with Nicole mm -hmm. on the the Gears team, yep. and she has been so good about bringing us women in and and kind of inspiring us and so, um, giving us power yep. and giving us the ability to learn and grow. And she's just Absolutely. an amazing mentor. And I'll subscribe to that because Nicole has been a huge role model for me as well. Yes. Uh, she's one of our uh, Women in Gaming leads. Uh, and she's, at, like, as soon as I joined um, the Xbox team, like, it's been really lo good looking up to her and yeah. learning with her and ev all the experience. And she's now working with Gears, as you said. So it's been really exciting to see that as well. Yeah, it's um, been fun seeing her yep. career grow as yeah, well the past yeah. couple of years. She totally deserves everything. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, so from your perspective and seeing like the evolution that our game, uh, our industry is going through, mm -hmm. we do see a lot of more women around us. Mm -hmm. um, what is, like from your perspective, what has been the impact that women have had in the gaming industry? Is that a good thing, a bad thing? Like how oh do you gosh. see the whole? It is such a good thing. Yep. Um, so I would say just like women and non-binary genders in general, I, we've mm -hmm. seen so much more of it publicly in the last few years because there's been a platform for them in the past few years where, I mean, we've all always been in the industry, but sometimes we just don't get that credit. We don't yep. get the public uh, gratification. By the way, I'm like looking bit, at the no, game, you're totally but I'm fine. totally you're doing, doing what you're saying. <laughs> um, or we just, you know, where shy isn't the right word, but sometimes it can be scary to put ourselves out there because yeah. of some of the, the online backlash we've had in the past. And um, I've just, I've seen people become more sympathetic, more aware of the, the situations that can occur and um, mm -hmm. kinder. And I love that. I love that we're yeah. growing and becoming more inclusive. And of a lot of the game people I follow, like, especially when it comes to, you know, sexual identities and, and non-binary right. identities and gender identities, I, I am learning so much from so many game developers who so now true. have a voice yep. and we're starting to see that in the actual games as well, mm -hmm. which I think is wonderful. The fact that we have, you know, more female um, options for characters that we can actually play in games, um, yep. more non-binary options, more, um, you know, same-sex relationships, just everything is becoming more diverse and I love it. Yeah, so actually you, you're you talking about there's this Women in Gaming panel that is going to happen at the Coalition this weekend. Yes. Uh, that Rose, uh, and she's the esports um, content producer for the Coalition. Mm -hmm. uh, she's actually organizing this panel about exactly that, like representation in games and how can we move that forward? How has the evolution been? Because usually um, as, a few, as of a few years ago, you, we would only see like male main characters in Absolutely. games, uh, but now we do have a lot of options out there. Um, how is that like? How do you feel about um, this this evolution? And w the thing for me when I think about this is like it feel it feels really good to land on a game and actually having a lot of choice and like oh yes. I can I can be like even for Gears Four like having Kate here yeah. has made such a huge difference. Like I've I've loved Gears of since the first one and I've played way too much Gears of War. <laughs> uh, but it was it was actually really refreshing and something that it didn't even cross my mind. Like I, I played Gears 1, I played Gears 2, 3, and it was all these dudes, which is 
fine, but I never even crossed. But when I had Kate, I was like, wait, this is really, really refreshing. I can go into totally. a multiplayer game and I can represent myself as I see myself. Yeah, yeah. and that's, that's a big thing is just being able to find yourself in the games. And I think we've seen this in media overall in the mm -hmm. past couple of years as well. Um, I remember... You know, sitting with a bunch of my my girlfriends watching Wonder Woman, yeah. and so many of us are just crying because we're seeing <laughs> this like really strong woman on screen. And I know a lot of um, African Americans had the same experience with Black Panther when they went there, yep. finally seeing exactly. a superhero that looked like them. Um, and for years, I mean, getting to see Kate in here was really exciting for me because, as I mentioned, this isn't the type of game that I normally play. I'm my personality is very different mm -hmm. than these types of personalities, yeah. um, but I was able to start to relate a little bit more with Kate. And even though she's so much you know, stronger and tougher than I am, I'm starting to see those personalities come out in myself a little bit more the more I play Gears, yep. to the point that um, I'm playing a, a role-playing game. I do a lot of like tabletop RPGs right. um, as well this weekend. And the character I created, after looking through it, I was like, oh my gosh, this is, this is a character <laughs> that would fit in Gears. Right. This is a really tough, strong character, yep. doesn't talk a whole lot you know compared to how i am normally and i'm really excited to play that type of personality that's awesome uh, how has it been to work like with the gears franchise and everything i'm pretty sure that probably yeah. you can't say them a lot <laughs> can't say a lot but i can but say that they're all amazing yeah. <laughs> everybody has an amazing sense of humor um everybody has been so kind and welcoming to bring me in i'm still pretty new on that team mm -hmm. a couple weeks in but getting to go up to the coalition and meet everybody yeah. was so cool yeah. and just geek and out about like the art their, of their new walls. studio too is looks Gorgeous. yeah it looks amazing it's yeah. super exciting um i damn it i had a question for you <laughs> and i totally forgot about it um oh what has been the if you had to pick one event that was your favorite event from your entire career what would that be oh my goodness <laughs> um ooh, well Oh my gosh, there's so many. <laughs> um, so I would say overall, year, year over year, San Diego Comic-Con is one of my favorite okay. basic events because- I've never been. Oh my gosh, it's so cool. I have to go. It's cool, especially from a marketing perspective. I geek out because the entire city gets transformed. People are taking over buildings and restaurants and completely re-skinning right. them for like movies. Um, so it's, you get to walk through this immersive experience, which is really, really neat. Um, and last year at San Diego Comic-Con, we had Freddie Prince Jr. join us for oh, the wow. Sea of Thieves team, yeah. their panel. And he is a, a delight and a huge Sea of Thieves <laughs> fan, fan. And um, him moderating that panel, you just got to see this like right. excitement come through him um, talking about the game and his experiences and like geeking out with all the people in the audience. That's and, so cool. Yeah, and it just reminds you of like, you know, these big celebrities yep. or people that like I saw when I was a kid and was like, yeah. oh, he's amazing. <laughs> Yeah, they love gaming too. They geek out about the exact same things we do, and that's really cool. That was really fun. Sea of Thieves is going through like a, a very cool moment. Like recently, these past few days, um, a lot of the big streamers have been actually streaming um, yeah. Sea of Thieves. So it's been super exciting to see. And honestly, like that team deserves everything because they ship like an amazing game that's totally focused on a team and you playing with your. Uh, fellow pirates yep. and it, it was all about relationship building and everything and they've been working so hard throughout this entire year so to like, hard. add content and make the game awesome like it's been so cool to see yeah um that it's really really exciting that a lot of other people are getting the chance to experience the game exactly um, yep. i think aaron greenberg tweeted today that it's been like number one and number two yep. on yep. Twitch lately. yeah it's it, it was yeah. like i think it was this past week people have been really picking it up uh and i think it's a testament of how nowadays people just don't give up on their games like they'll totally. do launch a game um and sea of thieves was great and they had an amazing launch actually mm -hmm. uh but they they keep it like they love the concept in the game so much they keep adding content they keep doing yeah. that it's it's really cool that we're at a time where it's really a, g a game is a service that they're providing to users Absolutely. so when you do buy in a game uh you you do expect like a lot of support uh from the developers and a lot of new content and a lot of like, yeah yep so it's cool. and they've got it's some fun stuff coming up too oh i don't think we're allowed okay to talk about. i <laughs> But that I don't know. Like you probably know way better than I do. So. But I'm I'm very excited yeah. to see them continue to grow and get even bigger and better and more expansive in the next year. Oh, that's really There's really some cool. fun stuff. I'm I'm excited. You know, like you come here, you come to our women in gaming stream, and you get to hear some of this cool <laughs> stuff. I don't know. Uh, I'll have some new stuff to share eventually in the next 
months. We'll see. That's exciting. Uh, that's exciting too. Um, <laughs> but again, probably we're not allowed to talk yep, about no, that. Not at all. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so I've been playing Gears 4. I, I'm trying to keep our conversation going while playing which is You're doing really, really hard I keep forgetting that that's still actually going on yeah no background. it's it, it it is actually really hard um so do you have anything else you would like to share with us like exciting things that you've mm -hmm. done in the past year i mean you you've you've, you've done yeah, a lot say, <laughs> yeah the, the book has been the the big thing that's been my yeah. baby this past year it's been really are exciting. you thinking about writing a new one I am. <gasps> I actually, yes. Tell um, us all about I've it. been in talks with some publishers and I have a call with um, a literary agent tomorrow to uh, talk about some other books coming out. So I've been looking at a lot of other fun Gears fandoms books. and geeky things. I would love to do a <gasps> Gears book. Yes. <laughs> I but will that, you know, we'd have to talk to the Gears team. Se. It would be a very bloody book. <laughs> you know, we can do a red velvet oh my cake gosh, yes. and like all the themes. I, I love that. Oh, my yeah. God, I'm dying. No. <laughs> I feel like I could also do a lot of like MREs or a lot of kind of like quick on the go kind of stuff. We should brainstorm with the chat of like what would the Gears of War cookbook look like? Totally. Yeah. If you have I wish I could see the chat, the though. Chat. I can't for some oh. reason. Oh, no. No. It disappeared. I'm trying. I'm trying to reload. But yeah, so yep. I'm thinking about that. I'm also thinking about other non-gaming fandoms. Um, so there are a couple like TV shows and plays and movies and stuff that I'm kind of in the works with. Wow, that's so. exciting. What are some of your favorite TV shows, movies? Ooh. Gosh. Uh, I know this is like the hardest. <laughs> it's like asking totally. your favorite game. It's like it's always yeah, hard to totally. answer. Um, I would say for movies, I really like movies that play on their genre a little bit. So I really like movies like Cabin in the Woods and Get Out mm -hmm. that really play on that horror genre. Um, <clears throat> I have like favorite silly comedies. Like I love Mean Girls. Um, I love Enchanted yep. um, since that plays on like the Disney genre a lot. Um, what else? I just saw uh, Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. Oh, that was so every, good. Yeah. <laughs> We've got like shouts in the back. We have some Everybody fancy needs to see it. It is. It's amazing the art styling is gorgeous the music is amazing the story is beautiful it's i've never seen such a can i call it beautiful yeah. like it's no it is it's it is like mind-blowing the design that went into that like, yeah it feels like it should really be like good. a limited art run of yep. a movie it doesn't yeah. feel like a big blockbuster movie it's very cool it's really cool um what are some of your favorite games um so my favorite games so um i really love um because i'm such a movie fan i like really cinematic um yep. games really um like ones that just tell a really good story um so one of the the first games in that genre i played um was firewatch hmm. and i absolutely I love, love that game and it's also I played it recently actually it was like yeah. four months ago I think. oh wow yeah yeah um, and that one was so cool for a couple reasons. One, if you're stuck in Seattle in the winter and you want to just <laughs> I, see some I know. beautiful yep. nature, <laughs> you can just like wander through True. the woods a little bit in that game. Um, and then two, the the story is so interesting because you're alone for most of it, and you're alone with your thoughts, both as mm -hmm. a character and a player. And so you're starting to put together all these scary things, and you're wondering what's going on. And yep. um, it plays on that a lot with the, the plot, which is fantastic. Are you from here, from Seattle? I am. Okay. Yep. 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 So well, I've been stuck in this <laughs> gray, rainy weather we're doing. And you're, like you're used to it. Yep. yep. I had a bit of a transition time when I first moved from Portugal to here. I can't even imagine. Two years ago, like coming from a super sunny, warm place yeah. to our gloomy winters. Well, I've learned I'm proud of you them. for still being here. Yeah, I will stick around because I've learned to love it. It's good. And it, it also like makes us appreciate when the sun comes out even more. Like it's always exciting when there's like a blue sky day. Yeah, it's the first so, day yeah. in the spring that it's yep. sunny. I swear everybody calls him sick. <laughs> <laughs> Just so they can like walk around Green Lake. Yeah, and, like, I know. It's in, really cool. In the nature. Yeah. Yep. Um, Okay, so you've you've been so for Gears Four, you've been playing. Are you? You said you were almost at the end. I'm almost at the end. Yeah. How have you? What do you think about the story and what's happening here? And um, I think it's very interesting. Um, I obviously we're still we're at this point where yeah. and where I am, we're going to try to find Kate's mother. Mm -hmm. I presume things will not work out super well. <laughs> You know, uh, especially <laughs> hearing a lot about what's coming up in the the franchise. I'm, I have you know yeah, my little yeah. hints of spoilers. Oh, I'm thinking you know, uh, spoilers. stuff's not yeah. gonna be so great. Um, but I'm excited to see how that 
how everything happens yep. and um, how it transitions us into preparing for Gears 5. Um, yeah, there's it's a lot of a lot of goo, a lot of mm -hmm. blood, a lot of yep. <laughs> fun stuff. Um, right now, I, I don't even think they've introduced what the monster is, but we're just about to fight this like really, new, really yep. big creature. Um, so I'm excited to learn a little bit more about those. The, the <laughs> oh, yeah, that's, uh, that's much bigger than the one I'm playing yep. right now. Um, the Snatchers have been a lot of fun, just oh, like yes. getting caught up in it and yep. having to get rescued out and dropping down in it. Why is it not working? I'm so sad that the shed is not working. <laughs> sad face. Ooh. Oh, that's, that's a good question. question. Um, Should we relay the question because people can hear you? Oh, yeah, I can relay it. Okay. Um, so I believe Kate in chat was asking any advice for would-be authors. Yeah. Uh, the big advice is to write nonstop. <laughs> if you have the ability to write in a blog form or a Tumblr form or something like that, do it. Um, because, again, I, the people found me and they reach out to me because I have been writing a blog for almost 10 years. Um, wow. And I wasn't expecting this at all. What's your blog, blog it's, about? It's called The Geeky Hostess. Oh, you uh, tell yep, us yep. about it. So yep. geekyhostess.com if you want to check that out. And I knew that I ultimately, I mean, my dream was to ultimately get to write a cookbook. Mm -hmm. And um, there you I go. Just, yeah. And, dream come true. And <laughs> it, it feels very lucky that someone reached out, but I put in, you know, yeah. eight to 10 years of work before wow. they reached out through yeah. this blog. Um, so whether it's fiction, you know, just put together a blog of some short stories as you write them. Mm -hmm. um, NaNoWriMo is a fantastic thing. That's um, in the month of November. It's you are working with tons of other people. You have a goal to write um, 50,000 words in a novel. Wow. And I have a lot of friends that do it and win every year. They, you know, they hit their 50,000 words. Um, so that's fan a fantastic way to just mm -hmm. make yourself sit down, give yourself the time and um, be a part of a community of a lot of other people going through the same thing. Um, if it is nonfiction, then you know, same thing, just write tons of recipes, write tons of, um, you know, quick little posts. Before I did a lot of recipes, I did a lot of lifestyle content. So if I found something really cool and new, I would write a quick post about it, um, which also really helped stretch my PR muscle. So yep. it's really easy for me to write press releases now because oh, wow. I essentially was yeah. writing positive content about new products on yep. my blog for so long. Um, How long did it take for you to write this book? Yeah, so they reached out to me I want to say November of 2017, and I finished the majority of the recipes by February. Mm. And then they reached out, said, "We love this. We want to yeah. add another 10 or 15 recipes." So oh, wow. okay. I spent another month doing those. Right. Um, recipes. Did you, did you come up with the recipes yourself, or were you inspired by some some other books, something? Yeah. So uh, I mean, for this, it was pretty simple because I I went through the list of everything mm -hmm. right. that Minecraft has in it and went, okay, I need a steak recipe. I need a rabbit stew recipe, which is chicken stew yeah. <laughs> in mine. Um, you know, I need uh, I need the cake. Right. Um, so once you have that list, mm -hmm. then it was just I need to come up with the best versions of these that are easy enough for kids but yeah. still interesting so then you just do a lot of research like you would in either nonfiction book um i look at a lot of other recipes that are out there oh. i i try a lot of different things mm -hmm. i kind of pick you know here and there and then a few of the recipes are things that i just make on my own so having to make it and That's then kind so of write cool. down yep. um the instructions as you're going through and then with recipes you then mm -hmm. have to like give it to other people to try to make sure that they understand what you're saying yep. uh, and i was fortunate for this one where the so you have someone reviewing everything you write and just yeah, making so suggestions we, edits and all yeah. of that okay. so i had a full editor for the book but then i also had friends who had kids that you know would take some of the recipes and try it with their kids mm -hmm. to make sure they you know they knew what was going on um and with this book, the food uh, photographer yeah. was, you know, a different person. I didn't do it, which was a great second step. It was the ability to have him see the recipes, make the food, photograph yep. it. And if it didn't look right, I knew something was wrong. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, and so after you added all those recipes, like it then goes into printing? So, like, yeah, how, so that's how all sent to works. the editor. Mm -hmm. And then the editor goes through it with me. And then we did, I think, one or two rounds of edits. And a lot of those are just like, let's add another game tip here. Or can we change <laughs> right. this name slightly? Um, or, oops, you mentioned sour cream and mayo. Which one is it? <laughs> oh, <laughs> you know, right. like little things yep. like that. Um, so we made all those fixes. And then it gets put to the book packager that puts together mm -hmm. the full layout of the book and then that sent to myself and the editor and the publishers to make sure everything looks good and clean yep. 
and then it gets sent to actually create. So there are a lot of fun moments throughout where I got to, you know, check the photos, check the illustrations, check it all together. And I think when I got that PDF of the, the layout all together, that was the moment where <laughs> the I was moment. like, this is happening. Yep. <laughs> yeah. So what was it like? Like, what did you feel when you first like saw it out there? Oh my like, gosh. And people started buying it and I can imagine like posting on social media and yeah, stuff like that. Exactly. Like, how did that feel? Amazing. <laughs> um, I have a, a little video on my Instagram, which okay. is um, Geeky yeah. Tara, yep. which is the moment that the box of books arrived at my house mm -hmm. and I opened them for the first time. <laughs> and like, I'm looking through a little bit and then I'm just like, I made a book. <laughs> it's, it's very. Oh, cool. I wish we had that video to show everyone. I really want to see but yeah, it. Yeah, if you go to Instagram <laughs> slash Geeky Tara, you'll, okay. you'll see that. Scroll down a little yep. bit. Um, so that, that was a really exciting moment. Um, And then, yeah, I, I went down to Powell's in Portland um, mm -hmm. a couple weekends ago and thought, like, let me just check to see if they had it. Right. And they had a couple copies. <sighs> and so I was very excited, took some photos wow. with them. And then I went to the desk and said, mm -hmm. like, hey, I'm the author. Can I sign them? And they have a whole process when authors oh, come really? in. They have, like, stickers they'll stick on the book. They That's give you, so like, whatever cool. Sharpie you want. <laughs> <laughs> so that was, that was really neat where they were like, oh, my gosh, the author is here. Yeah. And made a big deal about it. Wow. Yeah. That, that was really cool. It's fun. Um, What do you feel? Do you feel? I mean, you did write this for you mainly mm -hmm. for kids. So, do you feel like the kids and parents are getting on this together? Yes. Uh, so yeah. I've uh, I saw one tweet a little while back. Someone posted that they gave this book to their younger brother for mm -hmm. Christmas, and that he spent like the entire day reading through it page by page and telling her about all the recipes. And um, I heard a similar thing from a family mm -hmm. friend who has a son that you know. He's like a preteen right now, not super right. interested in a lot of things. But when he got this, he just sat down for an hour and was looking through everything wow. and talking about all the different Minecraft references and getting to see that, getting mm -hmm. to see that this like it passes the, the kid test. And right. that, like, these kids who do nothing but eat, sleep and breathe Minecraft are yep. loving it and getting the references. It's that just like brings a tear to my eye. It makes yeah, me so that's happy. So really, oh, my God, that's. Awesome. You're inspiring me. Uh, <laughs> I'm actually writing a book as well. Nothing oh, really. That's amazing. Yeah. Fiction or nonfiction? Uh, nonfiction. Oh, awesome. uh, so it's been very interesting. It's a very interesting and challenging process mm -hmm. of you have to motivate yourself to like to start writing because yep. once you do, you kind of get in the flow and you just write. But that first like step of starting is really, really hard. It's so tough. Yeah. And I've learned for myself that I have to give myself deadlines. Yeah. Made me think of like when you have to write all those English papers back mm, in school yes. and like it's the night before and you have to finish. You have to give yourself deadlines. So if yeah. I know, you know, in two months I need to have 60 recipes written, mm -hmm. then I do the math and say, okay, every week I need to write four recipes. Right. So every day I need to write at least half a recipe. And if you just give yourself those milestones, it's a lot more helpful. That's really cool. Um, I'm going to stop playing because I cannot do this. <laughs> like, I cannot keep a conversation going and playing Gears of War at the same time. And it's a problem because it's also Gears. So I actually care if I'm playing well yeah, or not. Yeah, and you're like, oh. So, you know, I'll stop that. Um, is there anything else you would like to see uh, or to say to people who want, like, because you do have these, like, double job, like, yeah. these two things yeah. that are really, really cool. Like, you work in the gaming industry as, like, with events and all the cool stuff that happens around the brand and the mm -hmm. fans and everything. And then you wrote this amazing yeah. book and you have a blog. Yep. <laughs> and you're like, it's a lot. It is one, a lot. One, how, how do you handle everything? Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I bet that one of those is like, you have a lot of passion for all of these. Exactly. Uh, and two, do you have any tips for people who yeah. want to do a bunch of things and it's okay to have a different hobby and different hobbies and different passions and all of that? Totally. Yep. Um, yeah, so a few things. One, um, I credit a little bit of of how my life is to the yeah. kind of millennial side hustle feel. Yeah. Um, I've always felt that, you know, if if I have a hobby, why not figure out how I can do right. that? Why not figure out how I can make money off of it? So everything that I do is something that I love and mm -hmm. it's something that I've I've worked hard to do. And I anytime I have a hobby like gaming, I, I find a way that I can yeah. make it into something that I can post publicly or get money off of. And then that holds me more accountable as well and makes me want to do that more often. Um, so when I started the Geeky Hostess, I started it because I was like, 
I like gaming. Um, yeah. I want to learn more about cooking. I want to learn more about entertaining, mm-hmm. throwing more like adult style dinner parties. Um, so what if I combine them and hold myself accountable by posting it online? Yep. And I, I need to do these things because we're right. expecting more content. Um, and now I'm known as a as the person who makes cupcakes. <laughs> I make them for the Xbox office all the time. Um, I, I have a cookbook. I'm not yep. the best cook in the world. Yeah. I, I don't cook super fancy things, mm-hmm. but there is a market for that for people who want more of approachable type and of simple content. quick stuff totally yeah and then um with that i would say to anyone as it's probably been said on the stream a lot before so many people just we all have imposter syndrome we all yeah. like feel like we don't know what we're doing <laughs> like well, why are we here how did we get here exactly. um but that's the trick is no one no one knows what they're doing yeah. all the time but they got there because they work hard. Yep. Um, so even if you feel like I'm not the best writer, I'm not the best cook, I'm not the best gamer, get on and stream, p- you know, create right. a blog, like start writing down recipes and trying. And the more you do it, the better you're going to get. And then eventually you'll be doing it for your job. <laughs> That's a great advice. And yes, we've been talking a lot about that uh, on the stream because it's a very recurrent uh, theme and people mm-hmm do uh, want to try find and find ways of how to cope that and even leverage that feeling that we have. Yeah. Um, so that's a really great advice. People, I hope you wrote that down because, <laughs> you know, uh, the more you know. <laughs> um, so I think we can move on to our, um, to our SNAP segment. Yeah. And so the SNAP segment is when we highlight uh, and give shout outs to people who are doing amazing things in the gaming industry or our teams or anything that we want to highlight about people. Um, I have one, but I'll let you go first. Oh my goodness. <laughs> uh, putting you on the spot. This is uh, <laughs> on the spot. Um, or maybe I can go first. Yeah. I'll okay, I'll go it. first. <laughs> so we did, uh, I did talk about it before, um, but I want to give a big shout out to Rose and Zoe from the coalition because they did put together this amazing event and panel for the women in gaming at the coalition, uh, where um, they invited a lot of people from the gaming industry around Vancouver, uh, where the coalition is based, by the way, Vancouver, Canada. Uh, and uh, they'll be hosting a panel to talk about uh, representations in video games. So. Um, how do we get to have more representation across the board? And that's not only gender uh, in our characters and the experience that we expose on uh, games as a media. Uh, So uh, I'll be driving up to Vancouver to attend that. And I'm super excited to see everyone and to hear uh, all the thoughts of all these amazing women that work in the industry and are trying to make that change. So snaps to Rose and Zoe for putting that together. There's a lot of snaps in the studio. (laughs) I love it. Okay, well, I have a couple small ones here. Yeah, that's um, totally fine. Yeah, so one, um, way back in the day, yep. even before Geeky Hostess, I had a gaming blog called Zaxi. Mm-hmm. Um, and one of the people who was on the blog with me was Britt Brombacher, who now is part of What's Good Games. And um, the ladies that are Love part of... Show. Yeah, the ladies yeah. that are part of What's Good Games are just, they hustle and they work so yes. hard and they have such great content. And I'm just, I'm so proud of, <laughs> of Britt and the entire What's Good Games yeah. people to just continuing to, you know, put more women who are knowledgeable about video games and know their mm-hmm. stuff and are amazing at what they do out in the forefront. So snaps Yay. to them. Snaps to them. And then awesome. I'm not sure if there is something that caused it today. I'll have to look mm-hmm. into it a little bit. But right before we started the stream, I noticed a bunch of people, including some of the Penny Arcade guys and some other um, game you know, streamers that I follow, all talking about just going into like Overwatch and a lot of other games and just banning anyone who's like oh, I've slurs seen some of those. and negative yep. comments. And I mean, that, that takes time. That's yep. like a churn to get yes. out there and do it. But um, I'm really proud of them for doing that. And especially some of them being men that are taking the time to step up and watch out for that negative content and helping make it a friendlier place yep. for everyone. Snaps for allyship. So we, we've actually been talking um, a lot of that, about that, both internally, but also outside of how can people just rally up around these minority groups and make sure that they feel safe and that they feel comfortable and that uh, everyone can come to work or get into the gaming industry um, and feel like they can be themselves. Yeah. And there are no issues whatsoever with whatever they identify with or whatever they relate to. Um, and so it's really important uh, for everyone who's around us to just rally up and make sure that 
we have a good environment. That also affects games, as you're saying. Yep. Like, we want to make sure that our communities are not toxic. That's a big recurrent theme uh, with Xbox Live, the team I work with, where we want to make sure that Xbox Live is a welcoming community. Absolutely. Like, everyone can come in and can they can play whatever the game they want, and they can be really good at them, and they can be, like, awful at the game, but still enjoy the game, and they can be noobs and pros, and yep. how can everyone just uh, be together and find their fun? And their fun might be... Like, they really want to chainsaw people in Gears of War. <laughs> That's totally okay. I love that doing that. That is very okay. <laughs> so, uh, we just want to make sure that they're, like people can find uh, other people that are uh, like them mm -hmm. and they can ha they have fun together. So, I think that's a big, big goal uh, for Xbox Live and something that inspires my team a lot is making sure that everyone is able to find their own community and the people they can relate with and just have f friends and and. Yeah. Create new relationships like that. Absolutely. So, yep, really good point brought up. Um, and so our next segment, uh, we do the one-ups and game overs. Yeah. So we st we usually start with the game overs. So although today is a very interesting <laughs> day where, like, the one-ups and the game overs are kind of the same yep. one. Yep. Because there is a really good side to it and a really uh, not that good side to it. Yeah. Um, so do you want to make the introduction? Yeah. yeah. So um, today we're combining our one-ups and game overs to talk about uh, the new Gillette commercial yep. and everything that's yes. been going on along with that. Um, so those of you, and I'm trying to see which commercial, which camera should there. there we go. <laughs> uh, so um, for those who have not seen the Gillette commercial, basically about a week or two ago, Gillette came out with a a new ad campaign, and it seems like kind of a new brand going mm -hmm. forward. Um, they're all about the the best a man can get or the best a man can mm -hmm. be. And <clears throat> they did this, you know, very moving yes. commercial about how lately it's not all about being, you know, the tough man. Right. Boys will be boys, you know, brash, not showing your emotions, fighting kind of guy. It's about being an ally to women to mm -hmm. being a good example for kids oh good we we like have, we have it right yep, now we have it rolling perfect and um just you know being able to that there are so many different ways to be masculine yes. and different types of men out there and that being a little bit kinder is not a bad thing in fact that mm -hmm. could be the best that a man can be um and with that gillette is donating a bunch of money to different organizations the first one being the boys and girls club yep which I think it's fantastic, and I don't yes. think anyone can find too much wrong with donating <laughs> ad money yep. to nope. the Boys and Girls Club. <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> um, but with that, um, I know I and a bunch of other you know women that I've talked to, we've like teared up watching the ad. We've yes. been so excited for this. We love the the idea of you know your kids are watching. You know, help them out. But um, there has been a lot of backlash. Yeah. And it was <laughs> it was really it was an interesting process for me when I first became so I actually knew the first time I heard about the ad was because some of our leads in our team actually shared this is like this is an amazing ad yeah. um, and everyone was super positive around it and then <laughs> I made a mistake of going to Twitter Clicking on the comments <laughs> yep. of going to Twitter and actually going and seeing the video on Twitter and, and as I started scrolling through the comments I was in a state of disbelief because I thought I was like everyone will be like super ex excited yeah, around I was like the this was a really safe thing for Gillette to do right and then and then I, I started the rolling like in the comments and everyone was like okay we're done I'm moving to this other company I, I can't remember what it was Dollar Shaver Club whatever it was yeah uh well I'll never buy a Gillette again and I was like why is there I I at first, I couldn't grasp why was there so many, so much backlash. Totally. So I rewatched the whole ad again uh, and again, <laughs> and it was it it was still hard for me. So I was just trying to understand both sides, like yeah. why why would someone feel offended or not okay with this? Um, and what I saw was that like oh we're vilifying the entire male like mm -hmm. uh, man community, and it's I I think people had a problem with that of like. Oh, the problem is only with men, and all men's are bad. All yeah. men, all men are bad, mm -hmm. and um, I, I saw a lot of that. Yeah, um, and the which I don't think is what the ad was going for, because you do see really good examples of men in the ad as well. Yeah, and the big thing there is the the ad itself is talking about toxic masculinity, mm -hmm. which is not saying that all masculinity is toxic, and yep. it's not saying that you exactly. can't be big and tough, but it's saying that there is a better word a toxic form of yeah. it 
that isn't okay. So this is not saying all men are like this. Yeah. It's not saying, you know, anything like that. It's just saying, hey, let's let's look at how yep. we're perceived and let's look at our actions and let's try to be better. Yep. But apparently in this day and age, sometimes kindness can be seen as a radical act. Yeah. Which, if that's the case, then I want to be radical. Yeah, I, I agree with you. Like, I do live my life by just, like, be kind to people yeah. uh, and never, like, making fast judgments of you meet someone and you might have an adverse reaction to someone when you first meet them. But you like, never that's know what they're okay. going through. But you never know. So, like, have, making sure that you do see, like, every experience and every new person in your life with, like, a a kind lens yeah. of and just giving opportunities to people to just prove you wrong like if you hey i just met you and i hate you <laughs> uh but like no y it, it should never be like that it should yeah. be just people sh should give opportunities to other people to show that it might have been a bad day it might have been like a bad month a bad year yeah. like um always keeping your heart open to new people new experiences and um, and I think this ad, like, if there's one thing that comes out of all of these drama online, usually, is that people do start having these conversations like exactly. the one they're having. They are, there are starting to talk about it. Yeah. Um, there are a couple other little things with the ad um, that from, like, an analytical marketing perspective, I've been having some mm -hmm. fun looking through. Um, one is I've heard a lot of people talk about that it's pandering and it's saying, oh, like, Gillette's so great because they're donating money, but it's still an ad. To which I say the same thing that I felt when Dove started having mm -hmm. more diverse people in their ads. And that's, as a marketing person, we yep. know that ad, like there is a budget for ads and yep. that will be spent on something and they yep. will be posting something. So if they're choosing to use that ad space to, to send this message, if they're choosing to use part mm -hmm. of their ad money to donate to yep. charities, I'm not going to be upset about it. Yep. Um, the yep. other thing I thought was really interesting was... Um, I actually had a really good talk with my mm -hmm. husband about it today um, where he was seeing some things in the ad and he was like, we were both talking about how mm -hmm. the ad almost targets more to females, that they're they're showing things that men do to women more oh, than to other okay. men. And um, and so there's one thing that, that he noticed that he, and there's like a business situation mm -hmm. where he's like, well, this man is saying what she's trying to say. He's an ally. He's trying right. to help her and he's amplifying her voice. And I was saying, well, as a woman, I've, I've heard that so many times as a microaggression and it isn't, it doesn't mean what you think it means. Yeah. Um, so just be very careful about your language with that and make sure that you're giving her the chance to use her voice yep. instead of talking over her to share her opinion. Yeah. Um, That's a good learning then, moment. Yeah, exactly. So it was yeah. a great conversation, a great learning moment. And then two, the fact that it targets women i think is really interesting because mm -hmm. women are often the the prime buyer for razors and right. for um that type of stuff like when i do my target run yep. i'm grabbing razors you know right as well so um part of me wonders how much of it was meant to target women versus men and how their next ad will mm -hmm. change and if they will take yep. some of this feedback into mind and see yeah, so It'll be interesting. Yeah, for your for your first point I did have that exact same conversation with some uh colleagues which was around okay, this is an ad, so obviously they they're trying to make money, they're trying to yeah. utilize this current theme that people are talking about um and I'm like, well, sure, they are. It's an ad. It's a business. They want to make money. But I'd rather them spending that money in trying to change something in our world and then using that exactly. other revenue or better revenue for good than just doing nothing at all and doing what they usually or do. Or just hiring a celebrity uh, to hold their razor. Yeah, <laughs> you know. <laughs> um, so, yeah, that's that's a really good point. It's a, it's a lot to uncover. Like, there's a lot to discuss around this. Uh, and, I, and I again, I, I do feel like... Uh, the best thing is the, all the conversations that people have been having of Absolutely. like even going through every little th scene in that ad I think helps and uh, enables us to have learning moments uh, with our friends, with our coworkers, with everyone. And just, but again, like it should be a respectful conversation, which Absolutely. online usually doesn't happen. <laughs> so you know, yeah, <laughs> totally. Uh, that's also something that I'd like to advocate here. It's just like. Be kind to people online. I know you're behind the screen and no one is looking at your face. Uh, but people like people, there are people on the other side. And again, yeah. you, you never and know you what they're going to say. Through. Some of the things you say online to yep. people to their face if you were just talking to them. Yeah, so absolutely. Think about that. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know if you have any other thoughts around. Yeah, that's just about it. Yeah. Yeah, this is um, so much fun. Oh, the, the other point I did have something was a lot that was brought up was like, oh, Gillette is being so fake because they have this, uh, what they call the pink tax. Yep. Uh, so basically they sell products for women which are usually kind of the same as 
the, what the men do, but they but make pink. it pink. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and they charge or more. Or have like a little bit of yeah. like some exactly. little design on it. Yep, and they charge more. So that was brought up as well, uh, which is a valid point. Like it, if it's the same product, it probably shouldn't absolutely cost more. Uh, so maybe they can like actually take that learning moment and that feedback from yeah. uh, from people that are seeing this ad and change that in their product and their strategy, which again is great. Yeah. Learning moment. I'd love to see an ad about yep. that. Yep. That would be amazing. Yeah, that would be great. Um, so I think we're out of time. Are we? <laughs> we are. <laughs> I was checking my watch. Um, so again, everyone, thank you so much for tuning into uh, our episode today. Oh, this was you. episode six. I'm sorry that I couldn't get a lot of questions from the chats. For some reason, my laptop is not uh, collaborating with me today. But if you um, have any questions for me, you can yeah. uh, just tweet at me um, at Geeky Tara and I'm Happy to answer any questions there. Yes, please do. Because as you see, like, Tara has an amazing story. And I'm so glad that you joined us. Thank you so much for yeah. being here. I hope Pleasure. we get, we get you can join us in future. Absolutely. Okay, cool. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it was great to hear about all the stuff that you do on Xbox, your story, how you got here. You had really amazing advice for anyone who wants to get into the gaming industry. And I know a lot of you are usually interested on how to talk more about that. If you have any suggestions for... Uh, the way we're running this show, uh, please feel free to tweet out at me. I don't think that will show up there, but it's at KX. It's really hard to spell, so if, if you can find me, I'm sorry. We'll try again. <laughs> or uh, we do have our social media channels for women in gaming. Yes. Uh, so you can just, both on Instagram and Twitter, reach out to us um, at Women in Gaming. Uh, both the handles are the same. We'll be listening and we'd love to hear your feedback of like uh, people that you want us to... Um, to have here on the show, themes that you want us to talk about, things like honestly for our one-ups and our snaps and our game overs, uh, we'd love to hear what you, you would like for us to talk. Yeah. So feel free to reach out. Uh, we'll be back in two weeks with another episode on Wednesday, February 6th. And be sure to follow us on our social media channels. Um, we will also have a very, very interesting internal uh, event, which is our... So Valentine's Day is coming up. Mm -hmm. We do our own Galentine's <gasps> Day. But not only Galentine's Day, it's we Galentine's Day. Okay, I'm done. <laughs> that, that's it. Wow. <laughs> Women in game, yeah. Galentine's Day. <laughs> so not on the next episode, but I hope that uh, in a month from now, we'll be able to share some uh, fun pictures and cool stuff from that event that we can share with you guys. Awesome. So make sure you follow our Mixer channel here to get a notification the next time we're live. And we'll see you on episode seven. Uh, we also love to highlight streamers on the Mixer platform. Hey. I, I'm having like a million announcements. <laughs> I should like phrase this better. Anyways, uh, we have a special female streamer to showcase for this month. It's Mixer.com slash Miss Z. And that's M-I-S-S-Z-E-E. -E. Uh, check it out, out on our Mixer channel. Thank you so much, Terry, for joining Thank us. You. Thank you, everyone, for joining us today. And we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. What's the best thing in the entire world? Puppies. Nope. It's streaming your favorite games live on Mixer. Nice work. Engage in streams and support your favorite streamers with Mixer's new virtual currency, Embers.